Live from the North Pole, it's Reformation Sunday. Good morning, everyone. It is so wonderful to have you here in Spirit-Filled Community at Messiah Lutheran Church on this Reformation Sunday, the Sunday where we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, where we give thanks for the fact that God is at work in the Spirit, always reforming, always making all things new, strengthening us and enlivening us to go out and serve a world in need. Uh, it was a little over 500 years ago where Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses on the Wittender, uh, Wittenberg uh, Church door, setting off the Protestant Reformation, setting off a reforming of Christ's church. And we give thanks for the fact that in so many ways, right now, a little over 500 years later, we are still uh, in the midst of that work. Uh, reforming, making all things new. It's so wonderful to have you all here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And yes, we are sorry that the thermostat somehow is not connecting to the furnace correctly. But that said, Messiah Lutheran Church is a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America that is rostered with reconciling works and continually seeks to become a more welcoming, affirming, and celebrating congregation to people of all ages, races, ethnicities, nationalities, sexual orientations, gender identities, gender expressions, relationship statuses, socioeconomic statuses, disabilities, mental and physical conditions. We believe that these things make the church diverse, beautiful, and reflective of God, and we therefore affirm the beauty, value, and gifts of each and every person. We acknowledge and honor the Haudenosaunee, Iroquois, and Algonquin nations upon whose ancestral homelands we gather for worship this day, as well as our indigenous siblings who continue to care for this land and call it their home. Please rise in body or spirit for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive, who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness. We confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven. You are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's pray to the Lord. The peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of the Father. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church at every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may our young people and their families come forward for our children and youth moment. I promise I tested negative for COVID three times. Yep. So, um, Sarah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to... Uh, ask you to uh, talk a little bit. So um, Sarah and I were talking right before his church started. What, do you remember what we were talking about? What it was like during COVID. What, was, what were the specifics? Like how <clears throat> we didn't get to see each other. Yeah, absolutely. So I was, I was saying to Sarah how, for me, the hardest part of being away um, from all you kiddos, for, 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 from, from being in lockdown for so long, the hardest part was being away from each and every single one of you. All the ways you bring so much joy into my life, all the ways you bring so much joy into my life, all the ways you bring so much joy into each other's lives, and all the ways that you remind me about the goodness of God, the presence of all of you, young people. You might not know this, but it's a big reminder of of, 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 of newness, of, 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 of new life in Christ, to see you all here and present. And I know everyone else here, it's a huge thing for them to see you all up here, and it makes a big difference in their lives, too. And that, when we talk about, so the, 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 the theme of Reformation Sunday, it's all about this thing called the Holy Spirit. Anyone have any, any idea what the Holy Spirit is? Go ahead. Let's see if I can have some water, please. Hey. Nothing? That's okay. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. 
Excuse me. Is it really what? So, one second, man. The Holy Spirit is the part of God that uh, is the aspect of God that connects us all. That reminds us that we all are in one life together. And it's the part of, of God that sort of enlivens us and sends us forth to care for one another. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is certainly present in each and every single one of your lives in some amazing ways. And I'm so thankful for that. And I'm so thankful for the fact, I mean, just a great example, I have a really weird throat thing going on right now. And uh, Sarah brought me some water. And that's the difference. And I couldn't survive without it. Yes, I'm going to want another bottle. <laughs> but uh, not right now. But, that, but that's a really, it's a really important reminder that in the spirit, we all have to kind of care for one another and, and, and keep one another going. And it's the part of God that helps us do just that. And we can give thanks for that each and every single day. So let's say a quick prayer. God, we thank you for the life of these awesome people, for all the ways the Holy Spirit shines forth in the life of our young people. We ask that you um, God help us and guide us to, to be a place where young people can thrive and to feel your spirit and to share your spirit in turn. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, friends. And at this time, um, Letitia Jones was, is going to give us a very brief mission moment. Uh, she wasn't able to last week, but she wanted to offer up a, a, a brief story uh, today. So I'm going to bring her, ask her to come forward at this time. hear me? Okay, it is on. Okay. All right, so when I was first asked by Penny to do this talk, I was like, absolutely not. There's no way. But after I thought about it, I said, it's important to get out of your comfort zone and to be take part in these things like this. Um, I then realized that the congregation has made my family and myself feel completely at home, and I believe it's important to share that with others in our community in hopes to grow and spread the warm, welcoming feeling with others. We can do small things to get more involved, such as change your seat or join one of the many groups that are offered. And I started to come back to church on holidays and special occasions with my parents for a few years once I realized how much fun my children were having and I was having and how at peace we all felt when we walked through the doors. I knew that it was time to become a member and make a commitment to Messiah. There is so much here, no matter your age. My kids, 12, 7, and 5, they have made many friends and attend many events that are family friendly. And there's always something to look forward to. And waking up on Sunday morning has no longer become a chore. We look forward to coming here, and it's because we want to be here. My kids wake up and they're asking, are they going to Sunday school? Is Gio going to help with um, assisting with mass? Or the biggest question of the day is, are we attending coffee hour? <laughs> um, with much eagerness to attend. I remember one of the first questions that Bella was asked about how church made her feel, and she said it made her feel safe. Not that she's not safe at home, but um, I think it showcased how we all feel in a way, no matter what trouble we're going through, how we feel at school or work. When you walk through these doors, you feel safe and you're in the company of God in the congregation. We most, most look forward to the children's sermons where pastor speaks to the children in a way that they can easily understand. Also, one of the other things is Sunday school, movie night, concerts, game night, potlucks, craft fairs, Easter egg hunts, Christmas pictures, there's so much here, and it's a place for all of us to attend, and I'm grateful to be a part of it, and the children are the future of Messiah Lutheran Church, and we look forward to watching them grow here, so thank you. Thank you so much, Letitia, and, and Isabella for helping out as well, and, uh, and we'll continue with our first reading.
A reading from Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is tested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Dear friends, the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And they answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Y'all may be seated. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? What do you mean by saying you will be made free? I think all of us have been in a similar place to the Jewish followers of Jesus in this Sunday's Gospel, and have been asking those very sort of questions, sort of, sort of dumbstruck at times. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? I'm going to be a little bit briefer than usual because it seems like I can't talk, but my goodness, over and over and over again, in a myriad of of ways in a myriad of times, I have uh, personally, um, usually while alone, but not always, sort of been in that moment of sort of, how could I ever be free? Um, 
again, or not even knowing that I wasn't feeling free. Uh, at moments of doubt and pain and, and, and anguish, I think of, I, I, I can remember the weekend after everything on January 6th happened at the Capitol a couple years ago, driving through the Adirondacks, just weeping, wondering how we could ever uh, bring people together across all our differences again. I remember... Um, I was on vacation when sort of the, uh, the Delta variant stuff hit and things were going to kind of close up again a little bit. And, you know, wondering, oh, will this ever end? I remember sitting in a hotel room in Colorado that week. I can remember thinking about um, how uh, excited I was to... I think we were going to have, like, the, the weekend that, that that lockdown started, I think we were going to have a big, like, bingo night fundraiser for Calumet or something. And we at that point, we were debating about whether or not we'd need to uh, put, like, our little, all the snacks in individual little bags. And then two years later, right? Over and over and over again, throughout the last couple of years, I know that I have experienced these moments of intense doubt and questioning uh, and pain. How could I ever feel free again? It's a very similar situation to what um, uh, led to, the, to, to what led to what we're celebrating today, Reformation Sunday. You see, um, the, the Lutheran message, the unique kind of Lutheran take on the gospel, I think, really speaks to the time and place we're living in—a time of a lot of doubt a time of wondering what is the meaning of it all, a time of can we find hope, can, you know, how can we reconnect? Because you see, the, what led Martin Luther to nail those 95 theses on the Wittenberg door, church of the, uh, the, 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 the church door in Wittenberg, a little over 500 years ago was a similar moment to uh, those moments I was just lifting up, those, those moments I was just saying in the go- or reading from our gospel, those moments of questioning, what do you mean by saying you will, will be made free? What do you mean? L- Luther, um, throughout much of his early life, he struggled a great deal with, um, with doubt, with, with thinking he could never uh, be good enough, that he could never... Uh, never uh, rise up to what the church and God expected of him. And so he would, there's, you know, I don't know who has ever seen any of the Luther movies, but it's, th- these parts at least are pretty accurate. That, you know, he, there's this, imagine this young man in like a solitary, uh, like cells, you know, kind of monk cell somewhere, and he's literally, you know, swearing and screaming at the devil to let him go, to let him, to, 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 to not, to not, to, to not continue burdening him. And He's he's so he's he struggles you know it's a you know immensely emotionally mentally um, with, with with this this weight this pain this this sort of thing that that tells him over and over and again you're never gonna be enough you're never gonna be able to be what you need to be you're never gonna be what what God needs expects you to be and then eventually. Random, you know, kind of just he comes upon this one verse, this one passage from the book of Romans. This very passage that you had in front of you that, that, that Barb read so wonderfully. That for there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now, ju- they are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And in that moment of, of doubt, in that moment of questioning, in that moment of of, 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 of what Luther called the greatest trick, uh, the devil's greatest trick that, you're, that you think you're alone in whatever you're facing, Luther reads that one verse and something clicks. And he realizes that 
that this whole religion thing, this whole uh, church thing, this whole Christianity thing isn't about uh, trying to get it right every single time or, or trying to, to, to be perfect or trying to earn your way into heaven, but rather it is about the gift of God's love freely given to us and given to us through the face of one another. And that changes everything for him. And that is something that sets him free. That reminder that we are, that God, we can let God be free to be God. Let God be free to do the things that God needs to do. And, let, and also let us be free to be people, sinners and saints all mixed up together at once, helping care, carry one another's burdens, helping support one another, helping us remind, help in one another remind us that the Spirit is still present, especially in those moments where we think the Spirit is no longer there, carrying one another's doubts and burdens and difficulties. I doubt I was the only one in this assembly today who has, has, who has felt uh, such things over the last few years. Perhaps that, that's something that you found yourself feeling as well. But my goodness, today is a testament to the fact that that spirit is at work as ever working to set us free and helping us to imagine a world that is better. My, you know, one thing I think a lot about during, during the Reformation, the, with the Reformation Sunday text, right, is how Luther started in some ways this amazing uh, movement, but even he, he proves his own, um, he proves his own theology, that we're all sinners and that we're all saints, right? He didn't get it all right. I, uh, you know, one of the, the, the biggest critiques of Luther, and rightfully so, is that he was rapidly anti-Semitic, for instance, right? And do we hear that somewhat, a little bit reflected in, in his interpretation of things like the Gospel of John? And um, my goodness, you know, 500 years later, and we're going to be releasing it um, in just a couple weeks, I've been, I've been spending a lot of time with my colleagues uh, in, in Schenectady Clergy Against Hate, we have this idea of this, 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 of, of getting, you know, there's around 150,000 people in the in Schenectady County. That's according to Wikipedia. That's like the population of our county. What if we could get at least just one percent of people in Schenectady County to take this, uh, this specific pledge of against, against hate that's come out of our various uh, faith communities? That, that's our so that's our goal. We're going to be launching this campaign. Uh, in just a couple weeks because of just the rash of, of, of violence and, and extremism that's been going on uh, locally and uh, across, on both sides of the political aisle, by the way, um, uh, and, and, and across the country. And, and, and the fact that through um, the, the mo these most difficult years, as a Lutheran, someone that came out of a tradition that was so rapidly, rapidly anti-Semitic that my closest friends, my closest colleagues in ministry were our local rabbis, is a testament to the fact that, my goodness, the Holy Spirit is still at work in so many ways, even though we forget it sometimes. The fa so, friends, hear the good news, that in those, whether you're experiencing or have recently experienced or are still experiencing those moments of doubt or pain or in falling for the devil's greatest trick that we are alone in something, hear the good news that the Spirit is at work, setting us all free, setting us free to be the imperfect people that we are, setting us free to share God's love with one another. My goodness, so many moments of doubt and pain it was just a year ago that all, exactly a year ago that y'all all made many of the largest financial contributions of your lives to make our church fully accessible and were able to walk up those new stairs for the first time. Sorry there wasn't heat, <laughs> but we got stairs. <laughs> but right to make a, that 
specific of a commitment to welcoming everyone, no matter their ability. Making that specific of a commitment to, to just be able to gather with one another, as Letitia was saying, around coffee hour and, 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 and share with one another and, and build up that spirit. And now we finally can see that work and, and, and how that is coming to fruition uh, thus, a lot of times the way the Holy Spirit works is in the long view. It sometimes takes a while to make new things happen, but God is indeed making all things new, setting us all free through our hands to serve God and love one another. I think of the fact that it was only last September that we took ownership of the Trinity Community Center. And this past September, literally this past week, we finally get, was the first month where we sort of quantified everything that's happening there. And last September alone, there was over 750 folks whose lives were touched, whether by our food pantries or our recovery programs or our movie nights or, or yoga nights or whatever. All these amazingly important things in just one year's time. And it's so easy, right, to get stuck in the in the day the day doubts and the and, and the day the day difficulties. And I know there's been so much growing pain, and, and 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 it's been so so hard. But that spirit is at work in the long view. My goodness, is it? I'm gonna close uh, with for me. I've, I've been having some really hard last couple of weeks. I know I've been sharing that with y'all, but I'm gonna close with one quote that. Um, was perhaps the, uh, the best m reminder of how the Holy Spirit uh, works uh, that I've had in the last few weeks. That, and it was that reminder of how God is still at work in my, in our, in my life uh, when I was really uh, struggling. Just about a, a couple weeks ago, I read this quote for the first time. And I hope it'll move your heart as much as it moved mine. And this is something that uh, our, one of our new, uh, new incoming members, Annie G., uh, wrote for, uh, and then you can find it on the back of your uh, Reformation Sunday um, booklet here. I joined Messiah in April 2022. Something was missing in my life. My world spiraled beginning of 2002 with issues with my son. I needed to reconnect spiritually, and Messiah welcomed me with open arms. They are a warm and welcoming congregation. I'm happy to be a part of the Messiah community. Enjoy being in the choir. Singing in the choir brings me joy, and I want to spread that joy to others. One more thing, prior to joining Messiah, I want to let everyone know that during the beginning of the pandemic, I utilized the Bread of Life Pantry, and I'll never forget how helpful Judy, Betsy, and Sarah were. Their smiles reassured me that everything was going to be okay. It warmed my heart. My gosh. The Spirit is at work, friends. Those smiles that can warm our heart, that spirit of welcome and, 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 and freely given uh, and freely giving grace, that is the Holy Spirit at work now as much as ever, pulling us away from ourselves and turning us towards the face of God, staring right back at us in the face of one another, setting us free. And thanks be to God for all the ways that you have been a part of that work of the Spirit and in the year and how you will be a part in the year ahead. Amen.
Y'all may be seated, and at this time, I would like to invite our Budget and Finance Chair, Christy Becker, forward <coughs> for our Reformation Sunday mission moment. I think we'll need the mic again, friends. Uh, as, or we can, use, we can use this mic. Yes, we can use this mic. Awesome. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, what a difference a year makes. Last year I talked about things coming to fruition, and now we're really seeing the fruits of our labor. Aesthetically, we have a brand new food pantry space, and the look here at Messiah is changing daily, including new stairs to the fellowship hall that we'll be christened today. The pews are fuller today than they were a year ago, and our outreach is ever increasing. I can't possibly thank everyone because all of you have made a contribution, but I do specifically want to thank those of you who gave temple talks these last few weeks to put a voice to those things our members have specified as priorities. As the church continues to grow and change through the ongoing success of our capital campaign, the focus of the budget and finance team continues to be on the general budget and how we can be supporting the day-to-day -day operation of the church and community center. It's a realistic fact that if we can't support the day-to-day -day operations, the short and long-term visions have to adjust to ensure that there's a place at the table for everyone. I say it every year, and this one is no different. We run a bare bones budget. There is no fluff in it. As much as, as, much as we'd like to say yes to every request and support every vision, that is not the reality of where we currently are financially. As most of you know, the congregation voted earlier this month to move money from the endowment fund to the general checking account to address a deficit. This is not a decision any of us came to lightly, and it's honestly not sustainable. To be good stewards of the church, we need to be mindful of all aspects of it, including our day-to-day -day financial position. While you've tasked the Budget and Finance Committee and Council with that responsibility, we can't do it alone and need your help. One of the things I've always loved about this church is the generosity of its people. Today is not only about your financial giving, but also the giving of your time and talents. No church can exist long term without all of these needs being met. And a growing one, such as Messiah, has a greater need for all components. I understand a lot is being asked of you today, but I also know you see the vision for what the church and community center are becoming, and that you have a personal story where these changes will positively impact you and your family. In any discussion of finances in the church, what we are really asking is for you to examine within your heart what Messiah means to you and your family, what dollar amount you can assign to that meaning, and with God's help, be comfortable contributing. Look around the church. Close your eyes and envision what the community center is and will be, but also look at the lights, feel the heat. Thank you, Steve. Be grateful for Pastor and Doug and Heather and Dave and recognize that none of this is possible with a budget and deficit. As the, cost of the, as the costs of running the church increase, do you have the ability to step up from where you are currently, whether it be 50 cents or $50? And if it's your first time making a financial intent to Messiah, welcome. Today, we invite you to submit your 2023 statement of intent with regard to both your support of the animal ministry and your time and talents. You will see on your statement of intent card that there is a place for both. For those of you joining us via Facebook, if you prefer to submit online, that option is available to you. Thank you for your time today, and if you have any questions regarding the annual budget, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you so much, uh, Christy, for um, always giving one of the, the more difficult uh, talks every single year after year. Uh, friends, at the conclusion of our service, um, the, we'll, 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 after our rite of commitment, 
Um, everyone's invited to take a few moments in prayerful consideration. <laughs> Excuse me. Definitely need water. I'm sorry I'm dying today. This is not great. And, um, and, and make a statement of intent for 2023. There'll be a basket up here in front. We do invite everyone, um, you know, anyone that's confirmed or up, uh, th you know, even if you're just making a statement of intent about time and talent, that's, we really want everyone to sort of sign up for a committee or two uh, uh, th today as well, uh, not just the, we, because it's so important, right? We have about um, around 70 of our almost 200 adult members are currently part of one committee or another, and we really need to expand that as well as expand our financial commitments to sustain the ministries of this place. And so we invite you uh, to submit, you know, one statement of intent for your household that will have, that has, tre you know, the financial piece and then, but every single person in the household to submit one that ha talks about your time and talent and what committees you want to be a part of in the year ahead. Uh, and I know myself and, and, and Christy and, and, and Penny will be available to answer any questions about the stewardship form because it is a little bit different this year. And with that said, with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. If people have prayers to offer, uh, please raise your hand. Our ushers will come forward uh, to, uh, with, the, with the microphone. With Lori, we lift up prayers of thanksgiving for Holy Trinity and our dear friends at Messiah, prayers of healing for Pastor, thank you, and all who are not feeling well. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. I have a prayer of thanksgiving for my niece, Sarah, whose um, symptoms appear to be in remission for the first time in nine months. And she was able to go out yesterday. Um, and I'm offering prayers for anyone who has uh, any kind of mental difficulties or illness that prevent them from living life to the holest, that God may heal them. Absolutely. We, we lift up prayers, oh God, for all those um, struggling with mental illness and, and other related difficulties, and we lift up prayers of thanksgiving for your healing uh, brought to Sarah. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Um, I have prayers of remembrance for my uh, my aunt Vita, who passed away on Friday. She was 95 and lived a great life, so I wanted to remember her. Oh, Lita? Tia. 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 Vita. Vita. Got it. We lift up prayers of thanksgiving for the life of Vita and pray for her family and friends and all who love her that you may comfort them, God, and as they mourn her passing. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For the Furbeck family, uh, as they continue their long journey through bad health and many bad things, uh, to keep comfort, particularly for Terry <laughs> and for uh, my father, whose birthday was this past week. We lift up prayers for the Burbeck family as they navigate difficulties and, and, and prayers of, for healing for, uh, you know, and as well. And then we lift up prayers of thanksgiving for Ernie's father um, uh, as he celebrated his birthday. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. I want prayers of healing for Brian, who's sitting right back here after his surgery, and Gloria. Thanks. We lift up prayers of healing for Brian and Gloria. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Prayers for guidance for our grandson TJ as he struggles with life choices um, and career decisions and uh, that he make the right choice that's right for him. We lift up prayers for, for guidance for TJ for a sense of peace 
and for, his sons, uh, and for you to lead him moving forward, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Prayers for the family of David Rhodes, who passed away suddenly last week um, and left some young children and um, a family that's devastated. Thank you. We lift up prayers for the family uh, of, of David Rhodes and that they may know your strength and peace and love, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uh, prayers for my great nephew, newborn Beckett, who, uh, two months old, uh, continues uh, recovering from birth uh, defect issues. We lift, lift up prayers for Becca that it, and for all who are caring for him, that he may know your healing, O oh God, as well as for all his friends and family, all those who love him. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We lift up uh, prayers for, for comfort for the Savoy family upon the loss of Tom this past week, oh God. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And with the church throughout the world, we lift up, uh, as part of the ecumenical prayer cycle, we lift up the countries of Canada and the United States of America this Sunday. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. And as we have lifted up prayer, oh, go for it. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another at this time. Peace. And friends, we, we know that some are joining us here at Messiah for the first time. If you're worshiping with us virtually and would like to learn more about our ministries and activities, please contact us by email or by phone. If you're joining us in person, you can fill out a visitor's card that should be in your pew. If you'd like to make an online gift using Tithely or via mail to Messiah in support of our ministries, this is a wonderful time to do so. If you've brought your offering, please feel free to place it in the plate when you depart. For those participating virtually, we invite you to help us spread the good news by sharing this live stream and liking our Facebook page. And for all you all do, in support of our mission to nourish our neighborhood in body, mind, and soul, we say thank you.
Friends, just a note um, before we continue. Obviously, um, I think I've tested negative for COVID three times. Um, but uh, just to, out of an abundance of caution, um, I'm so thankful Sarah's going to help us out with distribution of communion as well. So that way I'm not touching everyone's piece of bread. Um, and so what we're going to do, uh, I know there's some people joining us for the first time. Uh, you know, uh, we have a, the silver chalice will be a common cup of, of for wine for, um, uh, for sipping. Uh, the, uh, this cup will be the cup for, for dipping. And then this one is grape juice. We also have gluten-free options available as well. And I'll sort of just hang out in the background while y'all are doing communion. And I'm so thankful for this community as we are uh, working together and, and holding me up when I've got whatever's going on with my throat. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. And on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And with this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. And gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the way Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see.
rising body or spirit. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Thankful hearts and voices raised. Tell everyone what God has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name. Send us with your promises and lead your people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we may serve, your, serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with hope truth and peace, and may the Holy Trinity, one God, give guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. so thankful for that, to watch you all and working together while I'm got whatever's going on in my throat. I'm so thankful for the great example you all bring uh, to us as well. So let us continue with our rite of commitment and then we'll close with a benediction from our young people. God, you give us all that we have, creating us in your image and calling us good. Through you, the grass grows for the cattle, the plants grow food for all people. You provide food and drink, joy and celebration. Through the promise of Christ Jesus, you remind us, look to God first 
and God will make your way. Offer to God all that you receive, for your treasure is there, your heart will always be also. We've been created in love for love. Thank you, holy God, for the blessings of our lives. Ground us in gratitude for all you have given. Turn our hearts away from worry and fear towards abundance and generosity to others. Show us your unconditional love. And now everyone can join in with the sign of the cross. We give you honor and praise. Blessed and holy trinity. Three and one. Now and forever. Amen. And one, two, three. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. One, two, three. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All invited to prayerfully consider their statements of 10, 10 for 2023 and then join us upstairs in the fellowship hall. And as an additional way of helping, you can sign up for delivery for the food pantry as well. Talk to Judy about that.